Thank you both Susan and Scott for talking to me today. I know you've had sons that have come on our programs. If you don't mind, I'd love to just hear a bit more from you two about kind of what your history is with GLA, how you found out about us and you know how that journey began with your first son who came away. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, I'll, I'll start. Um, so Jake um, is our oldest boy and um, and we um, got to thinking, you know, maybe uh, towards the end of his junior year, junior high years that um, we wanted to, him to just kind of broaden his horizons and, mm. and know kind of what else was out there and be able to see uh, other parts of the world. And I felt like it was um, particularly important for him to see some of the uh, developing countries um, or a or a developing country um, you know my preference would have been for um, something a little bit longer than a week and and which he did um, we ultimately found uh, something um, through GLA for two weeks uh, in Tanzania and um, we you know, just super excited about that. Both um, Scott and I are um, are retired um, uh, military members. And so we, you know, in our careers, we had traveled quite a bit, um, not only, you know, to move with the boys um, stateside, but also just traveling for business um, uh, around the world. And so um, I just knew that the value that that played in our lives. And so we wanted um, something similar uh, for our boys. And then after Jake, you know, went on that trip, uh, we just said, you know what, we have to do this for our other two boys that are, that are coming up. There was another aspect to it as well that we looked at in terms of preparing them for college and helping them, you know, get into colleges based on what they wanted to study when they got there. Uh, we knew Jake was interested in international relations. So putting him into an environment where, you know, he got to see what that was like uh, in a developing country became important. And then as we looked to, towards Will, who decided that he was interested in dentistry, we looked for, you know, medical opportunities for him. And GLA presented both of those opportunities where they could, you know, go experience not only a developing country, but gain some experience that would they would then propel them into college and and help them as they went on into their studies. Yeah, yeah, William, our our second uh, child, he's a freshman in college now. And um, and so we found the the medical program that is in Dominican Republic um, for him. And um, and as Scott alluded, um, it was just an amazing experience. What I think a lot of parents would love to know from you both is what made you choose GLA because as parents, we have so many options. I'm sure you guys were looking at lots of different programs and companies and organizations and um, just would love to know, you know, what made you go with us? I probably played a bigger role in choosing uh, GLA um, uh, ultimately. And there are a lot of programs to choose from. It's so true. I think GLA early on, it just gave me kind of peace of mind, um, you know, for sending my old, my, my child, you know, halfway across the world. And, um, it, I could always reach somebody, um, always had my, um, uh, questions answered. Um, it, you know, there were no, um, hidden fees, no extra things that we weren't, we didn't discuss. Um, the, the link up at the airports, um, you know, was flawless. Um, you know, not everything is always perfect, but I can't think of anything that has gone wrong. I mean, when I say not perfect during travel, um, you know, there's delays, there's, um, you know, canceled flights, there's things like that, but I never had any kind of concern, um, you know, doing all of that through GLA. Um, the require, you know, uh, GLA required, you know, the itinerary, et cetera, and they put you in touch with um with other kids that were were going on the same trip um and so and we saw all of their information we were able to you know to reach out to whoever we wanted to um on that itinerary and and the list of other um people that were coming um and you know what's really fun is um both of our boys still uh, stay in touch with um with the kids that they went on their trips uh with you know just deep 
bonding friendships were were created um and which is really fun really neat you know as we were deciding to do this susan sort of brought me the the information and said what do you think about this and the thing that i liked was the name of it global leadership adventures and having been through it with two of our children now i feel like you could put a period after each one of those words um because it really is the thing that i think attracted me the most to it and having been through it now each one of those is a factor and you can i can see it in my children they have a global perspective they understand leadership and they always are up for an adventure and i think that you know it's a it's a great name and it really speaks to what the program does you know is, is why we picked it she brought me that name and i was like that sounds exactly like what we're looking for and and it's been true uh, you know, as you look towards Jake, uh, who went through the Tanzania program, that began his love affair with Africa. Um, and that has led through to, you know, like we mentioned, him being a global studies major. And then as he looked at internships, uh, there was an internship in South Africa that led him into being an intern with a non-government organization, Hoops for Hope. And uh, he spent, you know, a month and a half in South Africa going out into the townships uh, helping them uh, create, you know, better opportunities for the youth in, throughout South Africa, and uh, and you can draw a direct line from that experience back to his experience in Tanzania, uh, and then moving forward, uh, that has led him to the Peace Corps, and uh, he's been accepted into the wow. Peace Corps. He, yeah, he's going back to he's going to Lesotho, so the country within South Africa. Oh, uh, that's so exciting. He's going to spend, uh, you know, a little over two years there teaching math and English uh, to the children there in Lesotho. So, uh, you know, and all that's traced back to his experience with GLA. Um, it is a direct line to that. And so you can see the development uh, in him from the time he was, you know, a junior in high school to now a 22 year old getting ready to graduate, to go off into the Peace Corps to continue sort of that mission. It's been fascinating. And then William, who we mentioned, did the medical program in the Dominican Republic. Um, I I will tell you, I never even expected this from Will. I mean, I, if you would have told me that Will was going to enjoy that experience working in, in, in pop-up medical facilities and, and the like, I would have said, yeah, I don't really see that from him. Um, but he not only enjoyed it, but latched onto it. So in his first year at, at the University of Virginia, he joined a a group called Remote Area Medical. And what they do is they go out into uh, needy communities, underserved communities, and they bring uh, doctors and dentists from all over the country to provide free medical services to, to those communities. Uh, and Remote Area Medical is, I think it's started out in, in Tennessee. They've got chapters all around the Eastern Seaboard. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, you know, he's, he's working to become a, a leader in that organization and then on into dental school and then potentially providing that sort of same uh, service back into the communities if he becomes a dentist. So again, a direct line from what he's looking to do now yeah. to what he did in the Dominican Republic. So again, I just start, I go back to global leadership adventure. You can't, you can't find another better program to do that. Oh my gosh. Those are both two incredible stories. That's, it really, it almost, it makes me emotional as a parent myself, you yeah. know, because you hear them and you think um, it's just amazing that it can have that much of an effect. Yeah. And I would say chalk it all up to really the law of unforeseen consequences. I mean, we did not, when we, when we sent them to Tanzania or the Dominican Republic, we had, that was not, oh, this is going to change our lives. That's not what we were thinking. We were yeah. literally thinking, oh, this should be fun. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> And now you look back on it after the fact, and you go, wow, we're so glad we did that. It really changed their lives. Yeah, it changed the trajectory of their lives, for sure. I mean, the stories of what your, both your sons have already been with us are doing is incredible. And I think it is wonderful for parents to hear as well. It doesn't, you don't even have to go into this with this huge long-term, like we need to make sure that everyone's lives are going to be changed. It just yeah. is something that inherently happens and for a lot of parents like yourselves when you first signed up they're just looking for something fun and engaging for their for their children and something that's going to be very safe of course safety is 
our number one priority. Yeah, I think, you know, after talking to uh, the GLA um, staff, um, you know, each and every one of them, like you, you just feel like you've gotten to know them. And like I said, I was um, always able to reach somebody very quickly when I had um, questions. And just the amount of information that that uh, we received also, you know, certainly calms your nerves a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I um, there was something else that was I was thinking about, but uh, can't, I can't think of it. I I, um, I wouldn't hesitate, you know, sending um, even a junior high um, uh, child on, on a trip. You know, our kids were I think Jake was a sophomore in high school when he went mm -hmm. um, going into his junior year. And then William was going into his senior year, mm -hmm. um, you know, and both of them had traveled previously. Um, but I think that even if you had a kid that had not, you, you know, maneuvered around in an airport, et cetera, um, you know, wasn't as savvy in an airport, um, I, I would have no hesitation or even if you had a, a younger child. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly, you know, the protocols that GLA has put into place, um, you know, um, with, with transportation, um, once you're in the country and with just the sheer amount of information, very organized, um, I, I, I had, it, it certainly, uh, you know, gave me a uh, much better feeling about sending the kids over there. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and now, I mean, believe it or not, safety is not even probably the number one thing to me, like it was with our first child. Yeah. So um, now it's other, you know, logistical things or, or, yeah. you know, um, uh, that, that are first and foremost on our minds. And then it's not just the, the amount of information you get, it's the quality of the information. Uh, and as you mentioned, you've been with them for 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's, it's evident from the moment you start through this process, this is not your first rodeo. Right. Mm -hmm. They've been down this path before. They know all of the things to give you and are prepared with the questions that you already know to ask. So mm -hmm. I, I would say that, you know, that's the beginning of the comfort level is, you know, it is it is organized, as Susan mentioned, and it is evident that they have been down this path before. And then while they're in country, I would say that one of the coolest things that they do, and I don't know that it's necessarily from a safety protocol standpoint, but it certainly provides that is mm -hmm. the daily journal entries that come out. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So you're daily, you're getting some sort of feedback that your kid is there, he's mm -hmm. alive, mm -hmm. and they're <laughs> doing stuff. Um, and and at one point, they're actually going to write about it. Yeah. Um, so again, I don't know if you would call that part of the safety protocol, but it, it is reassuring that, mm -hmm. that things are going on, that they are doing exactly what you sent them to do, and they are having fun. Uh, and and to me, that's the most calming thing that can happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to wonder what's going on. I get I get something that is written, and it's written by the students. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that tells me what they're doing, and I get to see it sort of through their eyes. And I think that was pretty cool. You shared so much with us about what your sons are doing, and that was just so wonderful to hear. Um, and I would love to just thank you both profusely for taking your time out of your day to talk with me and um, I know that other families um, that are going to be watching this are going to find it really really helpful to just see two other parents who've done this multiple times and hear about your experiences so thank you both so so much absolutely no we're ha happy to to uh to talk about um the programs uh you know it it, it uh, truly we we feel very lucky to have found GLA and are excited about um, the you know the futures for both uh, bo both our sons and hopefully the third one as well will be able to go this summer. So yeah, no thanks to thanks really to, to you for allowing us the opportunity to talk about your program. I mean it, like I said, we did not go into it thinking it was going to be life changing, but it has been life changing and that's been fun. Mm. Well, thank you both so much. And um, we'll definitely be keeping in touch. I really hope your other son comes with us, um, but we'll be in touch either way. So again, thank you. Thank you very much, Susan and Scott, and have a lovely day. Yeah. Thank you. You too, honey. Thank Take you. Bye-bye.